That's great. Um, and then Vanessa, do you want to do roll call? do it so uh if somebody acknowledges in the chat just let me know uh Andreas Carver oh present <laughs> Mita Chan present Loki present Vance on you Bill Lopez Janet Ferreira. Uh, here. Uh, Jennifer Maldonado. Jenny Lynn. Angela Moore. Richard Nunez Lawrence. Ruth Nessa. Here. Uh, Susan Latham. Here. Uh, Toby Shepard Block. Uh, Word one. Word two. Can't hear you. Community Board 2, uh, Community Board 3, hmm. Community Board 4, I saw you, Carol welcome. <clears throat> uh, community Board 5, Community Board 6, Community Board 7, <coughs> Community Board 8. Here. Nine, ten, eleven, community board twelve. Again, community board thirteen, community board fourteen, uh, cures, Arnold. Uh, guardians of Flushing Bay. Here. Hi. Uh, Mr. T. Carding. Here. Uh, and I'm sorry, just because I can't see. Who was that from? Guardians of Flushing Bay. Oh, hi. That was Rachel Wu representing oh, hi, Guardians Rachel. of Flushing Bay. Hi. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, NYC H2O, Ryan Brenner. Yes, I'm here. Queen's Botanical Garden. Queen's Chamber of Commerce. Queen's County Farm Museum. Sutphin, Boule Sutphin Boulevard Bid. Tully. Waste management. Okay, uh, anybody who joined since we started roll call? Mary Arnold here for Cures. Hi, Mary. Sorry to be late. I, I got balled up. I was waiting on the wrong link. Uh oh. Okay. Um, and then uh, let me, if you are uh, a guest and would like to introduce yourself, you're welcome to to unmute and say your name. Yeah, hi, I'm Allison Allen. I'm uh, with the Manhattan Swab and I chair the Organics Committee. Welcome. Thanks. And if you'd like, uh, Allison, we already have your email, of course, but any other guests, if you're camera shy and want to leave your email in the chat, uh, that's very welcome. Great, thank you. Um, and do we have a quorum? No. Okay, yes, I did not think so. Um, 
So we will keep an eye out for people joining um, to, to approve the past couple meetings minutes. But in the meantime, um, we, can, we can just jump right in. Um, getting a little background on, I don't know if other people are hearing an echo, but uh, if it gets distracting, let me know. So um, the first thing on the agenda after um, roll call and attendance was an update on the curbside composting program. Um, so I, I put together a, a couple slides. So if you remember um, what we've heard in the past from um, representatives from DSMY is that the, the curbside composting data uh, is mixed in with their their normal tonnage data um, that they put out. I think that there there may be some additional um, analysis done specifically for this curbside composting pickup that's that's rolled out in Queens. But at the moment, we we have not seen um, we have not seen any updates. I think we'll we'll try to have. Um, some folks in uh, from DSMY come to the next meeting where we'll have two months of data. They they provide data on a month by month basis. So we really only have October now, um, which was the beginning of the the program. But I think it's it's still interesting to see. Um, I'll go ahead and and share my screen. Um, so my staying great. So we're going to share that, and we'll start with the slideshow. Um, so this is just showing what we're we're looking at. It's um, DSMY's monthly tonnage data, um, and it was updated on the eighth of November. Um, it's a monthly data set that that they update. It includes um, total tonnage as well as um, curbside, residential compost, uh, school compost, uh, and recyclables. Um, so I just took a look at the, the curbside residential compost just to see what we are looking at. And they do this by, they have borough totals, but they also do this by community district. Um, so this first slide here is just the total compost tonnage um, for the month of October by community district. Um, I can share these afterwards for, for folks to to dive in a little bit deeper with this. It's also all on open data if you're if you're interested. Um, so in terms of total tonnage for for the month, um, looks like community district 12 is is kind of pretty far in the lead in, in terms of the total tonnage. Um, the the next slide looks at what percentage of the total tonnage uh, is compostable material. Um, so this switches where community district 11 is is kind of the most of their um, tonnage that's that's compostable, but um, community district 12 is is close close behind there. Um, so again, this isn't data on the number of people who've requested bins or the number of people are participating. You know, those are indicators that we would love to have. Um, particularly to help us guide where we want to do outreach. But I think that this starts to show um, just where, where people are participating, um, where people are participating less. Um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll have a better picture next month when we have October and November data. Um, but I think this is, this is a pretty, pretty good start to see um, to see where we might want to concentrate some of our efforts. Um, so again, I can I can circulate these. Um, What's the for, total add up to? Ooh, that's a good question. I did not do that. Uh, and I also have, a, and I'm curious what other people think. I'm just looking at the areas where it's highest and the areas where it's not. And am I incorrect? It looks like the areas where it's highest are more um, single family and like two family houses. And the neighborhoods where there is less compost being picked up looks like it's more urban areas like Jackson Heights, North Corona, uh, the Frack City, apartment buildings. I don't know if, a, a, and I don't know every community in Queens as well as, uh, you know, so I'm curious what people think in looking at that data. Tree canopy. 
It's really where the trees are. Yeah. I I have a tendency to agree with you, Susan. Um, you look at Bayside on the 411, uh, Bayside area, Hollis Hills, Little Neck, predominantly um, single, you know, one and two family homes with some, you know, co-ops and stuff sprinkled in. I know for my district, District 12, predominantly again, and it's kind of like what Adam said, a lot of, you know, leaves to pick up also in in that area i'd be curious to know if they could if they could split out um the consumption and what the amount is in regards to leaves and what the amount is in regards to food scraps i don't know if they can get that detailed um but i'd be curious to see what um what those numbers are now this is the daily uh tonnage this is this should be monthly i think um the one that um we had been looking at before does for for daily this is i think still monthly oh this is the monthly Ooh. okay as far as i know it's the monthly tonnage wow okay seems like we have a ways to go okay yeah i i wanted to um add to it too so yeah, I, when when I was looking at the map, um, the, the thing is like, I mean, I used to live in Astoria and I'm, and, I'm, and just knowing that area and like, there's a lot of, you know, are, are these people still continuing doing drop-offs at like local farmer's market, like at Jackson Heights or, you know, are they still doing like those grassroots organization, like those smaller um, composting thing, um, like a, a local, you know, drop-off. But then also the challenges of what we heard, you know, Ryan, uh, when we were at the Queens Farm of the apartments that are not, you know, right, like the 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 property managers or whoever, or they're not really like participating. They're not really offering um, ways that people could participate to like drop off and like have those bigger bins for these bigger apartments. Like, I, I don't know, like, what's the update when it comes to like those units that have 3000 units to 85 mm -hmm. units, um, you know, just that that range and then um and yeah I think the single family homes I mean it's um mm -hmm. you know oh did it did it just change the color oh okay <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah I, th I think that's more like you know it could be like reachable I, it's still in my area like we um I'm seeing some people with the compost bins out but not a, not as much uh as I would like to see um but I did see like you know stapled on uh one of those um like on posts, like about curbside posting. So I do see some, a little bit better with like the marketing side, but definitely need to see more effort. Um, yeah. 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 And adding to that, I will say that at the Jackson Heights Farmer's Market, there is still a lot of compost drop-off. I've been asking people that, that staff the compost drop-off. And I've also spoken with other people who say that their buildings are not opting into it. Mm -hmm. And so, and they continue to drink mm -hmm. in the farmers markets. Okay. So. But I, I agree also with Adam. This is prime leaf time, and I didn't think about that since we don't collect leaves here. Yeah. yeah. What's the yellow? Why is it yellowed? Is it to just highlight it? Is is that why it's yellow? To show what the where the top amount of tonnage is, as well as the shear. Yeah. Is, yeah. Oh, so okay. the yellow will be the the highest and the the purple is the the lowest. Okay. Um okay. so and yes, this is this is all curbside. So um I think DSMY does collect data on um the the drop-off sites. That I have not seen updated in a while. Um so I'm not sure, you know, looking at whether people are are switching over or if the areas that curbside is is lower if those folks are doing um drop-offs that wouldn't be yeah. reflected here um mm -hmm. but i think everyone's points about um multi-family participation being kind of at least what we've heard from folks is the number one thing is you know i don't know where my bin is i i don't know if it was delivered i i can't get through to building management so i think that 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 is is a good good point and and definitely seems to at least be reflected here. 
Um, I see, Mary, you have your hand raised. Right. Um, I just wanted to mention Eleanor, who's our member on this call, um, her building, well, I, I should let Eleanor tell you, but it's in Jackson Heights. And um, Matthew Savello uh, of MSWAB said that, you know, 17% or something of building managers, like this is overall, are participating and the rest refuse. So Eleanor has encountered this personally. I don't want to put you on the spot, Eleanor, but uh, it's an issue. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I'm also thinking as we look at, you know, some areas where it's, you know, a lot of these apartment buildings, um, there's got to be a way to, um, you know, to nudge and put some more pressure. And part of that is I also wonder if maybe some of the residents aren't even aware, because I think initially Disney's plan was for the tenants to put pressure uh, on management um, so that they would then um, uh, opt in. Uh, I'm not sure if that strategy would work if the tenants, if the majority of tenants don't even know um, about the program, aren't, aren't aware of the program. Um, also, we talked about um, at the libraries, um, maybe targeting the libraries in those areas uh, to get the word out, um, having folks maybe at the library do one-on-one -on -one conversations or um, that that might be a, might be a way to uh, ensure and educate and get folks uh, uh, more involved in in the program. I'm thinking for those areas if we target the libraries and if there are any civics over there, uh, not sure tenant associations over there that we could maybe attend their meetings and so forth um, as a way to educate. And get so Andrea, out. Andrea, just on the point of the libraries, I've been lobbying internally at the library, and um, we have been sending out um, emails to mm -hmm. everybody to educate people on compost to the entire 1 million person list. And we've also been doing social media about it. And Gil Lopez is doing some composting workshops at several of our branches. Uh, so we're going to continue to push on our end. Right. Uh, because it, it's a, and, uh, and I can certainly find out about the, um, the, you know, the places where there's not as much buy-in happening. Yeah. But I have a feeling it isn't as much about education as it is being able to actually mm -hmm. get your building to buy in. I'm wondering if gotcha. that's an issue. But until we do that kind of outreach, until we really talk with the folks, 414, 243, and 404, those are the community districts, the community boards, and tenant associations at those at those buildings um, I, might be might be the way to go. Um, and based on the feedback we get, we will be able to determine what the what the true issue is. You know? Um, it's a lot of work, but yeah, definitely. Um, Susan Cleary, I see your your hand raised. Hi. Um, sorry, I haven't been to a, quite a few meetings, but uh, garbage is my life. <laughs> and I think I can't help but wonder how about flyers distributed to local businesses that they can put in their windows and uh, talk to their customers about? You know, there's a lot of small businesses around that could maybe help us out. It's a thought. Um... Business folks are usually busy during the day. We're, we're talking, um, but it's a thought. It's it's an idea. Uh, it's maybe it's us just doing trying out a combination of things. Maybe we take the lowest one. So the lowest one is four two. That's the lowest, right? That's Blissville, Hunters Point, Long Island City, Sunnyside, Sunnyside Gardens, and Woodside. And um, maybe focus in on just that community board, that district, um, 
and uh, uh, target uh, the, the buildings. Um, do we have anyone in our board on our board that's over in our, in those areas that can talk to us a little bit about that those areas over there? Is anyone on our board? Me. Yeah. Laura. Oh, awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, so where are you, Laura? Which one of the um towns? Uh, I mean, I live on the Sunnyside Woodside border. Um, I'm a member of community board too. Oh, okay, good. Sunnyside, Woodside. Uh, okay, awesome. Uh, so you would say it's predominantly what apartment buildings or what? what what's yeah. the? Yeah, uh, it's it's a mix. A lot of apartment buildings, a lot of uh, single family homes, garden apartments. Um, mm -hmm. Garden. Yeah. Apartments. Okay. Um, I mean, Long Island City especially is mostly apartment buildings. Yeah. One, that's the denser part. Um, um, yeah. We also have a lot of um, very active uh, community compost sites. So a lot of people still bring their compost uh, to the uh, community gardens and local sites. Mm -hmm. So you would say your area is an area that actually do compost? Uh, yes. A lot yes. Of, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, and they would they prefer to send it than to just have it picked up from uh, from sanitation. Have uh, some, you know what I mean? It's just to the curb, or is it because it's a? I mean, my building is uh, does the curbside and absolutely prefers it because it's much easier. Okay. Uh, but I think yeah, some of the larger biz, uh, buildings there's trouble with the, um, okay. the management companies or the landlords. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then maybe you could help us for, for that area and maybe be able to pinpoint and target if we go, you know, we're, we're doing, we're beginning to go do a deep dive, but. Um, sure, I actually would, I, I'm surprised by this data. I would have expected my area to be one of the highest uh, mm -hmm. um, in terms of. Yes, participation, yeah. Mm -hmm. That community board in 2020, in uh, April, they did about 62 tons a month of material. But I mean, for today, I mean, it's lower tree canopy, right? It's Long Island City, more buildings, Sunnyside, more commercial. So it's a, it's a larger community board, but not until you get into Sunnyside, do you have a whole bunch of trees. Yeah, but when they would take, they, it wasn't leaves they were taking. She said that for the most part, folks do indulge because they have quite a few compost garden areas. Um, so I'm sure it's organics they take in. Yeah, food scraps. Are the yeah, big. food scraps. Yeah. Yeah, like when, when my building composted um, while the program was suspended, we had actually trouble sourcing browns. Okay. We don't have land yeah. and leaves and yeah. So you think it might be just where folks just aren't aware, or you think it might be also a combination of just buildings not participating? I think it's buildings not participating, but also just the lack of yeah, like yard waste. It's all it's gonna be like all food scraps in my area. Okay. Okay, I'll shut up. I see Susan has her hand up and so does Janet. So I think Janet had hers first, so we'll do Janet and then Susan. Okay, yeah. So I just had as Laura was talking, I was just thinking about um because I when I learned the story, I, I used to um be, be, be besides like a story of pog, like if I go to the sunny side, uh farmers market, is maybe there's like a partnership you could work with, like uh with I think Grow NYC, right? Like if we could get, maybe they might have like some survey, like the people that are dropping off, hey, does your building or where you live offer, um, you know, compost assistance? Oh no, they don't, that's why I drop it off here. Or yeah, they do, but they like to go farmer's market and drop off, you know, just some kind of, you know, if, if we're trying to get data, we're trying to get more information um, from people that are dropping off the, scra the scraps at, at these like farmer's markets or, um, any like other like grassroots local you know 
And I think that could maybe be helpful too. Like if we, if we kind of reach out to them and see what they think and um, kind of, even if we create our own survey and, 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 you know, I could, I could work on that too, or something like, I kind of make like a little mini survey thing of what questions you want to ask and then, you know, print and kind of like send it to them, whatever it is best, you know, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here, but, you know, the people that, that have volunteered, you know, that, that work there. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I agree. I agree with Lauren, like, like just looking at these, like the, especially Western Queens, it's, they've been very, you know, big on like composting and, and, and even um, like any updates with like the pilot too, right? Then they have like a, a little small like pilot uh, with the little um, compost bins that people could kind of drop off too. Like what is, is, you know, that could be another thing too. I don't know. I forgot how many there are right now, but um, at this point since the first like launch, but I know story was like part of the that pilot program. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. So um, Janet, that's a great idea. The other thing, um, I know that Jackson Heights had the highest number of, the highest tonnage, I believe, of composting um, in all of Queens. We always had the highest numbers. And I'm wondering if we could get from Grow NYC, they must still weigh how much they're collecting at each of the farmers markets. Exactly. And so maybe they can provide us with information about how much is being collected there. And then the other thing, sorry, I'm hearing an echo. Um, the other thing I would say is that we also have a small, in addition to the Grow NYC, we have a local composting um, yard called Scraps. It's run by a local community organization, Jackson Heights Beautification Group. And people are dedicated to bringing their stuff, their compost there, because all the soil that results is used for all of the tree pit beautification. That's what they use for the soil for all the trees in the neighborhood and for parks and the public schools, et cetera. So that might be another reason that people, it's just easy and people are in the habit and it's like a social thing for some people as well. Mm -hmm. So it would, and I could find that information. Um, I could find that information from Jackson Heights Beautification Group about how many, how much they're getting in terms of weight, because that added to the Grow NYC would give us a better indication of at least what that community is doing and might help illustrate what's happening more than this data does. Okay. It'll, it'll be good to know. Um, but then we go back to the lowest community boards. Maybe the solid waste planning committee may be coming up with some kind of proposal as to how to approach um, uh, to increase uh, participation if the issue truly is um, increase in participation. Uh, I think I think we need to figure out a way to, to uh, attack this data that we're looking at. And maybe it's too soon. Maybe we need to look at next month and see what next month's data uh, tells us. We might see growth um, in tonnage uh, in those uh, one, two, three, and four. Um, but at some point, maybe depending on which ones are the lowest, maybe during the break, if we could come up with a plan to, to uh, um, work towards increasing participation. We, the, the planning uh, committee will present in a little while and you'll hear that we've been thinking about exactly that issue. Good. Okay. Can always count on you, Susan. <laughs> oh gosh, thank um, you. Yeah, one thing to add, I see Vanessa, you have your hand raised, but one quick thing is, is I think that DSMY has said in, in the past that they have um, material that's tailored for building managers and and landlords that they're willing to present so so I wonder if part of our our outreach strategy when we're talking to these community boards if there are particular buildings that are really interested in, and have not been making any headway um, if if one of our roles could just be you know coordinating with them and, and DSMY to set up presentations um, if the if the issue is building manager participation, um, which is at least anecdotally what what it seems like from from comments that that I've heard, mm -hmm. um, but I'll pass to to Vanessa.
I think you're still muted. You're right. Um, you <laughs> I was just going to add that what um, DSNY would call nonprofit partnerships, um, uh, Grow NYC, New York City Compost Project. Um, they DSNY does conglomerate that uh, monthly tonnage data. I don't know that it happens on anything more than an annual basis. It may happen on a monthly basis, but I know as of now it's reported on open data um, only annually. So um, just maybe we can spare ourselves some effort before we reach out to a few different nonprofit partners and try and add it up ourselves. I think uh, our, our sanitation contact should have that information for us. Mm, okay. Well, I, 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 I'm I going to do just a little bit of, uh, in, in regards to District 12, since that's where I'm from, um, our civics uh, have been working really hard uh, to educate um, their neighbors. And uh, to be honest, we felt slighted the first time around when uh, Community Board 13 um, did was indeed part of the plan and all of the community boards around us was part of the plan part of this program but we weren't um i also want to say uh eastern queens alliance those forums uh that we had just educating folks about the importance of composting um and then the rollout just putting in effort. So I, I'm very pleased to see that uh, District 12 um, is um, that our neighbors uh, are actually, um, they're engaged. Still got a lot of work to do, but it, it was nice. It's nice to see that. Can I get that slide by any chance mm -hmm. yeah, that definitely. I can share? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I'll send, I'll send these to, um, I'll send this out in an email right after the meeting for okay. everyone to use. Thank you. Great. Um, so I think we, I'm going to stop sharing um, and we can move on um, unless anyone has um, a last minute comment. Mm -hmm. um, our next um, agenda item, the communications committee uh, is going to do a walkthrough of, of the website and, and discuss some um, some future uh, changes uh, that we can make. So, so I think um, Anita is going to be sharing screen. Let me know if that is allowed. Ryan? Ryan? Yes. Before we start, I'm looking at the count. I keep checking the count. We've oh, got yes. Good call. 18, good call. Maybe. Uh, oh, I, it's, quorum is what, uh, Vanessa? 17? Um, yes, but we have some some guests with us, so we're okay. not yet. All right, recording. so we're not there. All right, no worries. Great. Yes, thanks for thanks for checking on that. Yeah. Oh, Ryan, you're gonna have to um, okay. interview let me, the speaker. Let me. Um, make you a co-host. See if that worked to share. Okay, so while Anita um, sh um, sh shares her screen, she, yeah, we just really wanted to just quickly brief you guys on like the updates. Anita Anita has been um, really spearheading this. Um, she's the the tech magician. Um, she's working her magic on this website. I'm very grateful because um, I I don't <laughs> know how to work a website. So it's been really great um, having her like just update like as we go through. Um, like during our committee meetings, like ways we could update and change and just like kind of little by little, we're kind of like sprinkling things, a few things here and there, but really like as, as we're giving the updates, we definitely want, um, you know, just like some feedback, of course, um, th this is definitely going to be a work in progress um, throughout the months. Um, and I'll definitely like chime in uh, once Anita's done, like overview and that way you guys get an idea. Um, can you guys see the QSwap page or another page? Let's see the QSwap one. Okay. The about us. Okay. Uh, ours. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're switching gears a little bit, um, trying to make sure that the QSwap website is up to date and really provide a uh, really valuable information for anybody who's coming by to look at it. Um, so I've tweaked uh, some things as I've mentioned uh, last week already. Um, and 
we wanted to do a quick walkthrough so that everyone's um, oh and Anita I'm sorry to interrupt you but we actually see your your whole desktop with the screen not just the the window that you're showing us so mm -hmm. if you make it full screen we can maybe see it a little better <laughs> uh, like two screens right now so that's why it's uh okay yeah. <laughs> you for <laughs> okay is this better No, so now we now you're not sharing. Yeah. We're not seeing anything. Oh, All right. Okay, you're better now. Okay, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um okay, uh so yeah, so this is uh the landing page that everyone um uh sees once they type in the uh, website. So it's about us. Uh pretty much all of this content we see was um on our page previously. So um it's just this bottom part that added since uh, the start of the program and I've updated all the links so that people can you know connect with us on Twitter and even on YouTube <laughs> um, and the next one is mission and members um, so over here uh, after looking at some of the other swap pages some of them are more detailed um, and listing who's like the chair of a committee um, so far uh, what I've put is just the normal meeting time um, of the committees. Uh, and then we have our statements here, but also um, I had a thought about maybe putting the mission statement and a vision statement in the about us instead of with the members page. Um, this next tab, uh, this was, a uh, picture that was here before, so I didn't take it off yet. I've been putting some um, interesting articles that came by um, that was uh, through that I've gotten through uh, other members sharing via email and also uh, folks on the education and communication committee um, so that folks can be apprised of some recent news. Um, of course, this is definitely not like all inclusive of all the matters that we talk about. I hope we get to that point. Right now, just mostly about um, organics, which is really on the top of everyone's mind right now, I guess. Um, the next one is the state of uh, waste in Queens report. Um, also had to update some links. Unfortunately, um, over here, it doesn't lead to anything. I didn't take it off completely, but um, for folks who worked on it prior, we need to find like some of the uh, original documents. But yeah, this one is like, um, amazing piece that folks have worked on um, earlier last year. Um, and lastly, uh, the calendar is a Google calendar that feeds in, uh, you know, the information straight to the website. Um, so this is where we want to have all of the information for various events. Um, so we have our uh, monthly meetings for um, the QSWAP as a whole, but also each committee and also like different um, events, like such as the one that uh, Gail led at the Queens Public Library. We have uh, cleanups, um, uh, e-waste recycling. So we really want to, you know, fill this up as much as possible. I think generally, I, um, at least for now, to to make sure that it's not super duper cluttered focusing on queen's events you know mostly environmental um yeah, waste related um and yeah i think the best way would just be to send information if it's on social media you can just uh, forward it to the um queen's swab account but if it's like a link you have like when you share it to like all of qswab i see it so i will put it on but you can also send it to me personally that works too so yeah um we would love the help of anybody who's interested in um kind of fact checking but also like putting more data like one big thing would be adding a resource tab to really have um like maps and information and posters and whatnot links so all of this there all right so yeah um open up to questions i'll keep this up if we're still referring to it yeah, I see Susan Latham has, has her hand raised, if you want to jump in. I'm sorry, I always have my hand raised. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is great. You've done a terrific job, um, and you've put a ton of information on here, and it's it's great. 
I have um, one comment, which is for mission and members. It would be fine to have the mission on the About Us page. I like kind of having it separate so it's easier for people to find, but we don't actually have information on this page about members. And one of the things that would be great is if people are interested in becoming men, so there could be something, I like having the QSWAB committees on there so people get to see when it's happening, but it would be great if there was a way that people could ask if, if you're interested in joining QSWAB, right? And I don't know where that mailing address would go to and we don't have any kind of an email list or anything, but it would be great if there's a way that people could contact us Again, as an all volunteer organization, I don't know who would be responsible for monitoring that, but I mean, there are, there are lots of groups out in Queens that we don't know about, and it would be great to have a better idea of who they are. So that's one thing. And then the second is you're gonna hear when the planning committee does its report that we also have a thought, well, actually, um, I will get to that later. It doesn't require another page or anything else. We'll get to that later. But that was my only comment. And the, and other than excellent job, did a great job. Thank you. Thanks, um, Susan. We actually, um, yeah, because I, I think when we when we first started kind of digging into the website, um, we were bold enough to look at the MSWAB website. <laughs> it's been established for 30 years. But just to see like where we can go, where we can push ourselves to like, okay, this is what they have, like, what do we, and, and of course, like anything that QSWAP needs for itself as, as a borough, but um, yeah, when it came to the members, like we saw that they had like their groups, like, especially in detail too, like it, just to be descriptive, like, okay, if I'm a, if I'm interested in QSWAP, I came across them on, in the Queens farm, um, what committees they have. And then like, we definitely talked about like having like that, um, like, you know, the caption of like, okay, legislative, you know, committee, um, you know, communications, like having that tab and, and adding some kind of like a stock photo or something that could, you know, relate to that. So that's, de that's definitely like in our minds. We don't, I don't think we went, I think we'll be like, maybe like the chairperson. I, I think anything we were talking about just having like the chairperson. Um, but I don't know, like, and then like, again, like then going through like member detail and stuff, but I, I know at least like the chairperson will definitely have like a contact information or something like that. And then, um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely like on our, on our list. Um, and then I just, let's see if there was something else. Wait, so was there anybody else had, had their hand up or? I don't see okay. um, any, if anyone has questions, feel free. Yeah. Uh, um, yes. I, I was, oh, Mary, no, Mary first. She has her hand up. Oh, I, <laughs> I was thinking that you know, um, as we get, sorry, I don't know whether it's feedback. As we get data, uh, like the data we saw tonight, uh, or information about, you know, uh, from the from the sanitation website, you know, where you can, where where can you compost? Where could you drop off? You know, how do you become a volunteer? Uh, in your building, if your building manager doesn't want to do it, you know, things like that, like to have like practical stuff, particularly about composting. I mean, it's kind of late in the day now with only a couple of weeks to go. But, um, you know, when it starts up in March, maybe a, a goal would be to have some pages under construction, hopefully, you know, for composting again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like who's doing the best, and then that that program that you talked with about uh, with Allison about like show us your bin. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, um, I, I guess we, we can quickly talk about that. So Allison from uh, M Swab um, received a picture from someone um, uh, about like it was a, a bin that was you know <laughs> didn't have uh, only organic. So we want to kind of help. Um, each other kind of share this information and kind of become a, a, a conversation topic uh, via social media. So um, I encourage everyone to share pictures uh, if they if you guys are taking pictures of brown bins, whether it's amazing or not, um, kind of share our way. So um, we can definitely uh, share on social media, but uh, 
in you know uh, just in general, we want to collect all this information together to be able to present to the SNY, present you know anywhere else that we're trying to educate. Um, so yeah, uh, Mary, I, I think yeah, it's uh, <laughs> we only have about a month of a curbside, but that page can definitely be like a dedicated compost uh, organics page. And even after the curbside program stops, then we'll pivot to, hey, since it stopped, where where can you drop off your food scraps? Great. Um, I see Adam has his hand raised. Yep, I think just as Anita, just as you closed, if we get that transition information up there and, and put the drop off, because people are going to start to need that in the next two weeks, three weeks. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, like a drop off for like where to put the compost when it ends. I think we don't we have that, Anita, like in the resource. Uh, like I know we have like an autumn, um, like drop off, like farmers markets or uh, that like things on the calendar, but it, this is like would be like the dedicated page, right? We're talking right. about like to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, create a new tab. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to, that's what I was kind of referring to for the planning committee. DSNY has a map on their website that lists all the various composting drop-off sites uh, that are available in Queens, or at least everything that they're aware of. And rather than us having to keep the page evergreen and updated, we could just link to what DSNY has. That's one of our recommendations from the planning committee is to link to that. And if we have a DSNY representative, we could also use this group to see if there are places that are not listed in the, uh, and I see Vanessa just put it here in the, in the, um, in the chat. Um, but we could also use this group to help flesh out and uh, flesh out that site if there are other places that are drop-offs that are not listed on there. And we could work with DSNY to make it more robust. But that's part of what our recommendation is going to be that when the drop, when the, this pickup Comp, uh, composting pickup drops. I'm sorry, it's been a very long day and week. Um, that that's one of the things that we need to do is to let people know once they're in the habit of composting that they can still do that, but they have to drop it off somewhere. Yeah, as long as it's accurate, because uh, I know I've seen um, some websites that list uh, where you can drop off, and it wasn't accurate, at least not for District 12. Um, not for Southeast Queens. But um, that's where we can work with DSNY to update it, okay. right? Because if we do that once, then they're the ones who are responsible for updating it, not us. And they have paid staff. Gotcha. And, then, and then we just link to it instead of us having to put the entire thing together. It's just an easier way for an all volunteer group to get that information out. Makes sense. Also under uh, QSWAP committees, um, by the way, excellent, excellent job. I, I really like the website. Um, if we could just a blurb under each, oh, what we are, what we do, what's the goal for 2024, some, some a little blurb so that um, if the public comes on and they, uh, there may, may be some interest, they'll kind of know what's going on in a particular committee and may say, hey, maybe I want to check that out. Uh, when's the next meeting and go to the calendar. So just a little blurb under the committees, I think would be nice. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's a great idea. Can actually each committee send it my way? Um, I, I don't know if we want to like all review each other, each uh, uh, like committee like together, or if if we can have each committee just send it over and then post it on. So I don't know how everyone wants to go about it. You mean have the chair? have each chair uh, submit something. Yeah. yeah, I think that sounds that sounds good. I can follow up after the meeting with with all of the chairs to make sure um, maybe we, we can do an initial um, blurb and if if the committees want to uh, examine it further, I know some some are actually meeting tomorrow. Um, so if if people want to spend some time in in their upcoming meetings refining that, um, I think that would be super helpful to send along. Um, and yes, I, I echoing everyone, I think this is it, really great. I, I love um, the calendar. I think that that is a huge thing to have an updated calendar um, 
for for organizations, especially for people who have no prior contact, being able to see when we meet and how to join is is super valuable. Um, and so so I think that I think that that's really great. And I also think that, you know, just echoing what what other people said, like uh, making sure, you know, when the program, when curbside ends, um, making sure people know where they can look for for resources, but then also that the things that they can compost are a little bit different, um, you know, particularly around meat and and whatnot. So so I think having those resources would be would be helpful. Okay. Are there hey. other comments folks have? Hate to be a pain, Ryan. We're at twenty participants. <laughs> Oh, great, great. Is that, are we? Vanessa. Let me, uh, I gotta see who it is here. <laughs> um, if you're if you're a member and you missed roll call, uh, you can maybe. Hi, this is Tarika from the Queensboro President's Office. I'm sorry, oh. guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay. I was in another meeting with the Borough President, so I just hopped on. Okay. No problem. We are happy to have you. Yes, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and this is Kat Servino. Um, I was on another call related to Powell's Cove Park. So um, I'm here, but late. Sorry about that. Great. No, no, that's perfect. Okay. Um, does that put us at, that's at least one? That does not. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we need 21, 21, Ryan. <laughs> 21. Okay. We're, we'll keep an eye on this participants list. Um, so my husband is here as well. James oh! Servino. Yeah. Sorry. Right, we're as a we're as a, a couple. <laughs> hello, hello. Um Hi. I've got both of you. Um we we are we are still short of quorum, however. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. By one. I won. Okay. So, you know, phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Um, so thank you for, for that. I don't know. Um, was there any, was there anything else you wanted to discuss or, or are we good to move on to committee reports? Um, just want to add like uh, tomorrow is the communications meeting. So if anyone wants to continue in conversation through video, uh, please join tomorrow at 630. Great. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so let's move on then first. Um, Mary, do you want to talk about the, the legislative committee and, and what's been going on there? And you are muted. Oops. I think you. Okay. There you go. Great. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, so the legislative committee met on November 10th. The meeting had representation from the Manhattan and Brooklyn swabs. We had a presentation by Debbie Lee and Rhonda Kaiser of Cafeteria Culture and discussed the skip the stuff legislation that QSWAP voted to advance when Richard Nunez Lawrence was legislative committee chair. This legislation means that plastic tableware and condiments packaged in plastic would not automatically be given with takeout food, which would of course reduce the amount of plastic in the city solid waste stream. Uh, Tarika, this is timely that you're, you're here now, because we have a letter for the borough president asking him to take a leadership role in advancing this legislation. Uh, we are planning to get that letter to you this week, and we are hoping that the bill might be able to be passed yet this year. There's a new sponsor. Uh, could you get back to Ryan in about a week after you receive the letter and let him know what the status is? Is that possible? Yes. I can let you know if you send us the letter. Um, and I'm can you, do you know the bill number now? Uh, and I who's and who's um who's okay. interesting it? Okay. Um, it is. Let's see. Uh, Council Member Marjorie Velasquez. Okay. 
been advanced by the Committee on Consumer and Worker Protection. Right. And it's intro 0559. Okay. Okay. If you could just send that over this week, I will just definitely let you know. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, at the request of city council members, QSWAB was asked to encourage Mayor Adams to support zero waste legislation uh, that, uh, that we had commented on too uh, at the um, sanitation committee hearing, uh, the zero waste bills, those five bills. Uh, Speaker Adrian Adams supports the bills and we understand the votes are there to pass it. Um, so this, there was a swab letter supporting the bills at the time of the hearing uh, for the sanitation committee, chaired of course by Sandy Nurse. And there also is extensive support for what is in the bills in QSWAB's report, The State of Waste in Queens, which Anita showed us again tonight, uh, all that fine work. So in response to the city, city council request, QSWAB and, um, and Manhattan SWAB drafted what would be an all swab letter in support. And we discussed that at the legislative committee at our uh, meeting on the 10. The draft letter was amended to include the need for mandatory composting that includes a grace period of 12 to 18 months that ends with a warning, not a ticket and a fine to protect lower income residents. MSWAB Chair Matthew Savello and Brooklyn SWAB Legislative Committee Chair Rhonda Kaiser, who were at our Legislative Committee meeting, are finalizing the draft letter, which will be shared with all the SWABs. So that's, that's in process now. Um, there is a need to make sure community input into the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, uh, as far as disadvantaged communities mapping and the scope, is being taken on board. I've been attending the climate justice working group meetings, but people who are not members can only watch. You can't ask questions or speak, and they're not taking any further public input. They plan to finalize the mapping by March. The next meetings are scheduled for November 30th, December 7th, and December 14th. And um, there's also a meeting tomorrow, I believe on the scope. They're, they're trying to push this along now. And um, from some of the comments that were made today, I, I feel very uneasy and I'm not alone in this. Dr. Natalie uh, Vena and uh, of Queens College and Andrea and others, Bilal, uh, have expressed concern about, um, you know, our, our inputs and the things that were left off for Queens are not being taken into account. So I think it's important for us to have a presence at these meetings and um, to continue to, to ask, um, you know, the borough president and our state officials to, um, to you know, insist that these, um, these things that were left off uh, are going to be taken into account. They have a consulting company that is doing the work. Um, there's a there's a there is a level of competence there, but you know the train is far away from the station, and and we we weren't in on it, so that's a problem. And if anybody wants information about um, how to get in on those WebEx meetings, I I'll, I'll, I'd be glad to share that. So um, that's pretty much that's pretty much the report. And really, just want to say, you know, to Allison Allen who is here, and and um, you know, all the other swabs. I mean, they've just been so supportive of us and what we're trying to, you know, as we come up in um, in our in our efforts here. And uh, and then the linking the power of the swabs again. City Council came to us and asked the swabs to, you know, to do this. There's a power in this. And, uh, you know, we're taking our place now. So thank you. And thanks to Ryan. And thanks to the borough president and, you know, Tarika and Kat. I mean, it's, uh, it's great. Hey, thank you. Um, I see Adam has his hand raised. 
Allison, could you summarize the climate at uh, city council that Sandy Nurse described about where those the zero waste legislation is at right now and what the pathway forward is for it? I think I saw some notes that you had taken. Um, yeah, um, she had said, and this was at the Brooklyn swap meeting that basically, um, you know, they were ready to move forward with the bill. And then they found out that an environmental review had not been started, which means that there's now going to be a delay of three to six months, which of course could be much longer. We, we don't know, you know, but at the start, they're saying three to six months. So um any work they did on previous programs environmental reviews they can't apply so they're kind of starting from scratch already um again so you know they also need to procure budget you know they have to look into the budget issues because there's going to be you know a lot of trucks a lot of equipment a lot of staff so um you know, she also mentioned there'll be an oversight hearing in January. I'm not sure if that's going to be an opportunity to, you know, provide testimony, but I think we kind of have to be prepared for a bit of a budget fight and to, you know, we're not, we're not even though there's the three to six months before the environmental review, I think we still have to keep pressure. You know, we have to find ways to get the mayor's attention and ways to contact him. Um, to let people know of all the issues about how many people want it. And of course, all the issues, you know, that people are seeing in Queens. Specifically. So in, a, in a nutshell, that environmental review process, that means what? What's the I, Yeah, I, I, I honestly don't know too much about it. We tried to ask somebody on the call on our uh, in organics committee last night. He didn't, I, I don't know enough about it. I wish I did. I'd like to find somebody who can tell us more. I got two other questions. So, you know, zero waste is a laudable goal. I think we all want to get there sometime, some way, somehow. Um, I mean, I've heard the commissioner flat out say trying to get to zero waste by 2030 is not, not going to happen. And so that always, for me, it, it creates a question of, okay, if you have a, a goal, an aspirational goal, what's the plan that, that backs that up? What's the what's New York City's plan to achieve zero waste? Because there's been a lot of talk and there had been some critique by Bob Lang, who was formerly of sanitation department about the de Blasio administration's goal setting that didn't have any substantive planning behind it. Um, so does, does this bill any different or is it aspirate, is this letter and those legislation, are they aspirational or are they plan oriented? Um, I, I'm not, I'm not as familiar with the letter, to be honest. Um, we, we, we are still pushing, we, we know no one's committing to zero waste by 2030, but we kind of feel that, that that's our role to continue and organics, you know, being 41% of what is exported, um, you know, we can get, we can get 41%, we can get 41% closer to zero waste if we just pass mandatory, well, eventually, you know, pass mandatory organics and get people participating. Mm -hmm. It's kind of two steps. Got it. And then my last comment, I just read that the city's predicting 12 billion dollar budget deficit over the next three years um and that sanitation had reached 48 percent of its goal of reducing its budget by three percent as mayor adams had asked this year um i mean the messaging that i've heard from the sanitation department is caution and with the rollout and that's why they wanted to choose queens because we were leaf heavy and and that's why they wanted to pause the program. So I, I guess I have a, it's like, we want to get to zero waste. We know that, as Allison just said, that organics are the biggest chunk. We want to make that work, but how should we be a strategic partner in advocating that with a plan that isn't going to draw the city into another debacle like we had with the last program? 
important? Well, I think having a plan is important. I agree with you there. Um, however, the request um, from uh, city council, who should be in the know and who must have a strategy was that uh, we forward a letter. And the letter was, my, I, how I recall it, zero waste to landfill, but amended to include incinerators. Um, the other part of that was mandatory uh, composting, which um, as a group, I believe we came around, because for me, black and brown communities cannot afford um, to pay fines. And that was my issue with mandatory composting because at some point, if it's mandatory, you're going to have low income people, uh, low income folks or poor folks may, may end up paying a fine. So my thinking was you need to, needed to be some kind of warning of some sort before a fine was put in place. So we, we uh, I believe the letter is going to address that. Um, so those two issues, which is amending the bill so that it now includes incinerators and mandatory composting, wasn't the full uh, grouping of bills because it was five pieces of legislation. Though the only two we were going to speak to were the two I just, you know, that's what was discussed. Um, when I'm you're trying to way. get when you're trying to get something passed, it requires lobbying. Um, and it it requires that you may write a letter, uh, you know, but you find different ways, rallies, what have you, testimony at hearings and so forth, so that you can get your legislation passed. This is just one piece in attempting to get uh legislation passed that could advance our cause around reducing waste going to landfills. Do we need a plan? Yes, overall, we need a plan. Are those two bills that we could support? Absolutely, I would say those are two bills we can support. And if the request is coming from city council that we draft a letter to the mayor's office in that regard, I, I I think it's uh, worthwhile. So how about if we take the best of both worlds and send a letter that we want the city to come up with a plan on how to get to zero waste by um, a, des a designated time so that you know we, we put some teeth into that that goal we, we, we set a pathway on how to achieve it. I'm I'm always very wary about the political nature of the council, um, and the whole thing. But yeah. you know that's 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 the table that we're sitting at. I want to believe the city council think they have a plan, and the five the plan is on those five pieces of um, legislation. However, if you wish to bring forward some type of letter that the legislative committee can look at, um, and also remember that this is going to be letter that includes all the swabs um, in agreement uh, along with other organizations um, that's in agreement on this. Uh, so um, as, as you speak to uh, a plan on, uh, and you think that that plan that uh, city council in regards to those five bills they put forward um, is insufficient, um, then I would say you you would put forward that recommendation to the legislative committee and we could take a look at it. Yeah, no, I just, I, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just wanted, I, I can't figure it out to raise my hand, I'm sorry. Um, um, what was I gonna say? Oh yes, Manhattan Swab, we actually drafted a zero waste bill and we gave it to Sandy Nurse. Um, it was it was probably too late in the game. They had already come out with their, you know, zero waste package. But you know, she has it, and we're hoping that you know. And of course, her priority is getting her bills passed right now. But kind of like yeah. we're hoping that there's a point where we, you know, we push that more, you know, push that, and she gets behind it, and we get more council members. Perhaps we're kind of waiting to take her lead a little bit on it. 
Well, I think she must have heard you all because one of the things was I think you wanted the bill to be amended to include incinerators, correct? And my understanding is incinerators was indeed added as yeah, part but, of, of the amended bill. Right. That Those were our suggested amendments to the zero waste package, just the four. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that, thing made. that was that was taken on board and that's in that's in the letter. Mm -hmm. And it's really geared based on Allison's brilliant framing. It's really uh, based on. Uh, you know, the, the whole rat program, the rat abatement program, because mm -hmm. what, what organics is, is the rats are eating, that's rat food. Okay. So, and if you put it in a brown bin, then it's, it's in a rat proof bin. So, you know, it kind of, it just follows on with the, the program that they're already embarked on now. So there's like another reason for it. But you know, this is not controversial within the city council. We were asked to do this. It's not controversial within our past work on the state of waste in Queens and on letters that went out at the time of the, uh, the letter that went out at the time of the hearing. So um, you know, anyway, it's, so this letter will be returned to, um, you know, Ryan and- uh, And, and the borough president, we, we need to, keep our board president office in the loop on, on everything. I think may, maybe it's like, maybe I'm pressing a little bit just because when I go into our facility and I see what 500 tons per day is at our plant or used to be, it, you know, when the city of New York is at the end of the fire hose of 10,000 to 12,000 tons per day of residential waste, we gotta have a plan if you're talking about banning disposal to incinerators. You gotta have a plan because the reality is is that the city's got 20 year contracts with those end use facilities. And we gotta have a, a real plan that's inclusive and that's gonna include things like pay as you throw and fining in order for us to drive that 12,000 tons per day down. Because I my, my goal is to, is to be, to get the swabs at the table with sanitation for the solid waste master planning process. And I, I want us to be a, a, you know, a willing partner in that discussion. And I'm just worried when we talk about, use the word zero without a plan and, and we use it as a goal as opposed to a plan that they're not gonna see us as a willing partner on that journey. The, the sanitation, works for the mayor, right? And and so what we're doing is we're, we're, we're doing what the city council asked us to do and we're going to the mayor. So, you know, we're, we're, in, the, we're in the game here and we're, we're, we're in the game in a way that makes sense to the people in the city council. So, you know, and, and we're, I think we're in, a, we're in the game in a way that makes sense to the mayor if he looks at it from the standpoint of rat abatement. So, um, you know, I, what we're doing is not controversial. Could we be doing more in the future, you know, to create a whole alternative infrastructure for, you know, dealing with waste? I mean, we know there's a, there's a system now we know what the results of that system are. Uh, we know there are contracts, you know, there are landfills, there are burners, we know that, okay? But we're starting to create a new system and the way we're being advised to start that process, it, which is not the status quo, is to pass this legislation. So, you know, that's what we've been about. Well, I would just, Again, the SWAP got their start as an anti-incineration organization, trying to defeat the, the incinerator in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And then that led to Local Law 19, which was a plan to try to stop having to build incinerators. I did a lot of anti-incineration work in my previous lifetime. Um, I get it. I just, um, we got we got a saying no incineration and no landfill is extremely, it's radical. and um, 
that's why I'm pressing is like, that's great. It's a great aspirational goal, but we need a, we need a plan that we can stand behind of pay as you throw, more aggressive legislation on packaging and finding folks who don't recycle and compost and, and really have a true enforcement program, both on the commercial sector and the private sector. So I, I just, it's so great to have a radical, it's great to have a radical idea that it's, it's zero incineration, but in reality, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. Adam, I hear you. Why don't you put something together? Why don't you put some thoughts and ideas as to how you think this, that whole area you're speaking of in regards to a plan? Mm -hmm. And let's see if there's some way to incorporate that. I, I hear you. I, I hear what you're saying. But Allison, is there in the Manhattan swap, there's been some of that discussion, right? Is there, I, I understand that there's a little bit of divergence in opinion. Um, no, well, no, I mean, we, we wanted, uh, we definitely wanted uh, no, uh, nothing to in landfills and incineration. So right. I don't recall any controversy on that. Um, and I don't know if the bill we're looking at says 2030. It might, and, and I know it's always been zero waste uh, by 2030, but um, I get also part of what Adam is saying, but I think we're talking two separate things. We're talking about legislation that's already been uh, put forward with the amendment and uh, possibly you know, trying to get that passed. And there's still also conversation to be had around, okay, so if we get it passed, how do we make this happen? And I think that's where the plan comes in. That's where you, you begin to take the deep dive and be in depth as, as, as to how that can happen. I mean, that was the reason why you have Reynoso last year do a hearing. And it was all about, you know, addressing, saying to sanitation, are you serious about getting to 2030? And how do you plan to do that? So uh, I, I guess the thinking is, let's get the legislation passed. And once you get it passed, then people maybe, you, you know, you can come back and, 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 and do a deep dive and, and figure out. I mean, that would be up to sanitation to do. It's certainly above my intellect in, in regards to that. I mean, it's not. But what I'm saying is, at least let's get it passed. I think it's two separate things we're talking about. We're talking about legislation that currently exists, that is trying to be passed. And then the other part of that is, okay, now that it's passed, it's got to get done sanitation yeah. figure out how to do it i think Great. that's so that's in the limited. interest of time i, I think we're, we're gonna have to move on but i i see kat's had her hand up for a while so so kat if you want to have um the last comment and then the legislative committee meets december 8th is that right mary is that the next meeting for you all yeah it's the second thursday at um six o'clock i think Great, great. So we can definitely continue conversations there. But Kat, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, I Adam, I completely hear what you're saying and I agree, you know, you you need to chart a course to getting there. Um at the very micro level of just looking around my community since um they launched curbside, it's such a minority of people are actually even participating in College Point anyway. I see on my block my pail out and there are a lot of homes on my block on both sides of the street you know it's my pail and maybe i'll see another pail on you know three blocks away so you know obviously all of us really believe Graham, but i don't know that mailing placards to you know mailing uh flyers to people in the mail telling them about curbside that's not doesn't seem to be cutting it so i'd like to know what we can do what sanitation can do to kind of step up their game and get people to actually want to do it i don't know i feel like that's such a big challenge right now just getting people to do it yeah great thank you um so we can continue this conversation in the um legislative committee i don't think there's anything finalized at the moment um so I'll move on next to um, Susan to talk about the Solid Waste Planning Committee. Uh, thank you, and I'll be brief. I'm gonna try to share my screen. Oh, let me try. Uh, you can 
enable it? Yes. Try now. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying here. No problem. Okay. Um, so what we did, uh, we had a meeting on November 7th and uh, of the planning committee. What we did is we reviewed the plan um, that we had already developed uh, and that was approved by the QSWAB in September, 2022. We took a look at everything that was on the plan, all the various strategies, and we marked which ones had been completed, which ones were in progress. There's some we don't know what the status is. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this out to everybody. And it would be great if the committee chairs could let, we just don't have time to do it right now. If the committee chairs could just let us know so that we can update this to see what's happening. Um, the other thing that we did is uh, we added an additional goal, two additional goals. One is educate Queens residents about alternative composting sites during the three month pause. Um, that includes adding this DSNY map of alternative composting sites. I just checked, they are pretty up to date actually for my neighborhood and they have all the sites available. There's a couple of things on there that's wonky but we should all take a look that, um, at that site that was shared in the chat and just take a look and see in your neighborhood if it looks like it's pretty up to date. Um, are there additional sites that are not listed on that site that could be added to the map? Uh, and we thought we could collaborate with the other swabs on fleshing out DSNY's map of composting sites. And then widely broadcast the map and announcements, social media. Uh, we wanted to uh, talk with DSNY about um, continuing their promotional activities uh, you know, would they be interested in, I mean, once you've gotten people in the habit of composting, you don't want to ask them to stop. So we want to try to identify a way that we can keep people in the habit of composting, but provide them with information on where they can do it during the three month pause. And then we need to go back to our original plan, the things that we've completed and start again, repeat the strategies for education to educate Queens residents that composting is going to begin again in March. Um, and again, work with electeds and try a bunch of the strategies that we've done right now. I will say that there are a couple of things that the, um, well, there are a couple of items here, again, that we're not sure about. And so I'm just going to ask for people to just get back in touch with me once you've had a chance to look at the plan, let us know about things that are in progress or are complete. And I'm going to stop sharing. Great, thank you. Um, and if you can send me the most recent version, I can include that uh, in the follow-up email with the with the slides, so folks can can check that out. Um, thank you for that. Um, moving to the education committee, um, are there any updates on um, outreach and education? Okay. Uh... Jenny wasn't able to make this meeting, so I'll be speaking um, for the education committee. Um, so we uh, we continued um, uh, with the next door plan. Um, so that's an app where you connect with your neighbors, or maybe some of you are using it. Um, so we created uh, like um, a tracking sheet, which I'll put the link in the chat, so that we can try to not have too much overlap and cover as many neighborhoods as possible so when you sign up you have um, your broad neighborhood but then they kind of refine it to like uh, like a smaller part as well um so inside this folder you'll see one sheet that has all the neighbors listed um so you can just jot your name down and please uh, share this with anybody you know who might be using it if you personally don't use it um and yeah, this is a great tool. I've been on that app and a few other people have been talking about organics, uh, um, curbside collection. Uh, and in addition to that, we um, were brainstorming about um, making a one pager to address some common concerns um, that popped up that hasn't been covered by any um, DSNY um, literature that, that we know of, um, like such as like, 
you know, what, um, like, uh, using a bag in the bin and the latch isn't working, or, you know, is it possible to share a bin with the neighboring building, things like that. Um, but also in light of the timing, we will get to working on a one pager about, you know, what's to do after. So definitely aligning with what Susan just shared. Great, thank you for that. And I'll send out this link as well um, for for folks to sign up. And, and I think the idea is to, you know, reach out if you're, Andrea, you've talked about talking in person with neighbors. This is another option of sending out information, uh, perhaps to folks you don't talk to, but um, another option. Um, yeah, Adam. Does anybody remember the block captains when that were used when the first, when Local Law 19 rolled out? The Santa Gleason's mother was actually former sanitation department Chief Gleason, his mother was actually uh, a community liaison, and it was a tool to formally engage through using sanitation's power and strength to have block captains throughout the city to spread the word. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be that would be great, and and I think that there are uh, at least some folks, many a member of of QSWAP uh, who are, are strong advocates in their neighborhood. So, so working on getting folks resources to be able to have conversations with people and answer questions, I think would be, would be super helpful. That model would be really cool. Um, I, I, I just have to say, talking to neighbors, I mean, once you know you know your neighbors, that's one way because I was telling, um, both um, Adam and Ryan at our exec meeting. The first week um, I put out my brown bin, we were the only ones on the block that had a brown bin out. And um, I started reaching out. One said they do composting, um, but the same one who said she does composting, I see now her brown bin is coming out because she couldn't do, um, you know, the bones and the fish and all of that. So now I see hers. And then I was talking to my other neighbor who had her leaves and black bags. And, you know, I don't know what she was doing with them, stack it, stop it, you know, stacking it in a garage or whatever. And then I told her, listen, you want to do the clear bags and, you know, sanitation is going to pick it up. They're picking it up. And sure enough, this week I saw she had a bunch of leaves, uh, bags of leaves, some clear, some in black bags, but she had it out for sanitation um, to pick it up. Um, and my other neighbor, you know, he said, oh, I've had this because he comes from Community Board 13 and he's now in Community Board 12, but he said he had it when he was in Community Board 13, but it's too much work and so I started telling him about the environment, which he knew. Um, and he, I had, I was going walking with another neighbor and coming back, he says, okay, Andrea, I'm gonna start doing it. So talking to your neighbors can work. Um, you don't know what their reasoning might be, why they're not doing it. Sometimes all it takes is just a little bit more education, a little bit of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and as Adam say, let them see you keep putting that brown bin out and it'll catch on. So I, I, I am truly someone that would promote talking to your neighbors. Andrea, you should, you should take a picture of you and Bill, like a selfie with your brown bin <laughs> and send it to Anita. No, <laughs> this is what, this is what she and Allison want to do. Oh, <laughs> so where's your brown bin? <laughs> okay, that's a thought. <laughs> I guess part, part of my thought process is that that kind of um, block captain is what we need in a formal zero waste plan in order to, and we need to make it turn it from informal with from Andrea talking to a handful of folks to make that citywide and use the power of, of the the government basically and those block captains to make that happen yeah it's not a bad idea adam i like it yeah 
Yeah, and we can we can ask, you know, I, I think that part of the outreach of this was going door to door, and I'm not sure whether that was ever done before for a DSMY program. And so I, I'd be curious to see, you know, what their what their existing goals are, whether that's something they're planning on doing again in March. If not, could we encourage that? So so I think that that, that would be you know what what the the education and outreach but then also getting local folks involved um would also be tremendously helpful um yeah yeah you, ryan you know what i'm thinking um you know this block captain thing we, we i know one of the thoughts are we are tarika we uh, i believe the chair plans to try to um meet um with the borough president by year end just to talk about moving into um 2023 uh, and if we could put in if we could put together and include the block captain as as one of the thoughts and ideas um, to assist in getting us um, increased participation uh, helping us to reach our goal um, I think that would be a good idea if we can start to pull it pull it all together um, and include that um, as an item. But I, Tarika, I think uh, Ryan plans to send you an email soon. Yes. Um, okay, I'll be looking forward to all the emails. I owe Ryan an email anyway, but it's going to take me reading QSLA bylaws, which okay. I haven't done yet. So I just need no to make that happen. So, yeah, okay. definitely, definitely. Um, so I'll call Mary and then we have to move on to. The next committee. Yeah, I was just going to say at the legis at the next legislative committee meeting, we're going to do um, you know recommendations for 2023, kind of a goal setting that we could contribute to that to that meeting that you're going to have. Right. Now. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Um, so moving on now, uh, I know we're we're a little over time, but um, Bilal, do you want to update on environmental justice? I know you're mm -hmm. also meeting um, tomorrow at seven. Yes, yes. I'll uh, be quickly quick. Um, tomorrow, the environmental justice committee will be meeting um, at seven p.m. Eastern. Um, I will put a uh, the email um, out to everyone in the in our email blast and I will also uh, drop the link here shortly. Um, <clears throat> we had a successful meeting last um, I, um, last um, last month uh, or yeah last month and um, a few weeks ago and um, got a few people attended so we were able to narrow down some of our goals and um, also uh, did not forget that um, we our goal of the committee is also to um, draft up the letter to send to the executive board in reference to inviting um, in, uh, a speaker or two from the uh, New York City Climate um, Working Group um, to come and speak to us, to present with us. Um, so that uh, we'll be working on that um, as well. Should have a draft ready for that meeting. Um, and then we can, uh, as a committee, look at it and then uh, send it off to the executive board for their purview and then sent out that as an invitation um, to uh, the contact that we've been given from we act um, and any other contacts that we had on the working climate working justice committee um, to discuss further um, the DEC and what they're doing um, up there so everyone can be at least informed as to what's the latest and um, and uh, how we can uh, as a swab still um, have Queens a voice to the voice Queens concerns over the uh, over the mapping of Queens. And that's that's all I have. So tomorrow, seven o'clock, if people can come on, um, please, please feel free to jump on. Great. Thank you so much. Um, for for old business stuff. Um, the first was just committee participation. You've heard the the committees are are very busy with lots lots going on. So if you're still looking to plug into a committee, um, there's tons to do. 
Um, and the bylaws committee, I'll, I'll be following up with with folks um, about our our plan. But but we're we're working on um, amendments to the bylaws um, for approval at a future meeting. Um, is there any new business um, that anyone would like to raise? So we're we're not commenting on the proposed change of the set out times for residential and commercial trash for the hearing. Mm -hmm. That's coming up. Good question. I think it was put, I think Anita put it in the chat before. Oh, I have not been looking at the chat except for what I just wrote. <laughs> um, that is a good question. And a reporter actually sent me an email asking whether we had a comment on that. Um, do we have a comment on that? I don't. <laughs> So is that something the legislative committee needs to look at? Because it's a hearing. Who's doing is, is It's coming from sanitation, the hearing. Mm -hmm. When is it? 18th. Uh, the no, eight this, this Friday. Um, yeah, there's a like online comment. You can email comment, but also um, say it in uh, through video. Um, I was going to comment on it, uh, like on a like personally yeah yeah on the commercial side it requires if you don't put your stuff out in a container that you have to put it out at eight instead mm -hmm. of when you close so there's some question about small shop owners does that mean they really have to go back and set it out or will they change the law to allow containers to be visible from the curb which was eliminated in the early 2000s yeah, who pays for that? That's on the commercial side. Mm -hmm. I, I I scrolled through the comments on the link that Anita put up, mostly except for some religious uh, observance questions about you know when the Sabbath happens, they can't put it out at a certain time. Um, it seemed just to be a lot of belly aching, <laughs> and uh, why are you changing the law? Why are you changing the rule again? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, that's we're probably a little late to the game on that one to get it together to respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think so, especially for Friday. Um, but we can send out for folks if, um, yeah. And Allison just commented. So we can send out the info if people want to comment individually. Um, I'm not sure that we'll be able to do something. Yeah, we don't have a position um, and it would require doing some research. Um, mm -hmm. what, what I'm thinking though is so that we're not caught flat-footed uh, moving forward, we, we need to be able to uh, uh, check the city council roster uh, for sanit uh, at least the sanitation committee uh, to see what what what's what's out there. Uh, so this way we know that there's a hearing. We know uh, what's what's being discussed and be able to be prepared to give commentary. Um, you know, because we're hearing this two days before. There has to be. Um, a process of some sort that's put in place so that we're checking this on on a regular basis. I think this is um, administrative rulemaking. Is that is that right? So it's that's an additional layer where it's not city council, and and I actually don't know okay. a ton about where those are. It's posted. coming from the mayor. Mm -hmm. It's coming from the mayor. You're right. Yeah. So I don't I don't actually know that might be something the legislative committee if we want to start looking I mean I know the city council calendar and and how to track bills yeah. there but I don't know as much about um, the, the administrative rulemaking process or where that calendar is. Okay, uh, it's not a bill. It was in response to the mayor's uh, press conference, and I'm going to try to find a link and put it in the chat. Yeah. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Tarika, do you think you could possibly help us with that in regards to rulemaking and so forth that we're able to, uh, maybe there's a website of some sort or, uh, where we can actually uh, check that or, or on, on a regular basis, maybe twice a month or something along those lines. What, what rulemaking are you looking for? Well, um, based on uh, it would, in this case, it's not city council, it's coming from the mayor and- An executive uh, order? I don't- It would probably be an executive order, right? Allison just put it into the chat. Huh? Okay. Allison put it in the chat, the link. Yeah, it's a new rule. <clears throat> Um, in response to the one of the, the rat action plan, uh, right. <clears throat> so. lots of comments about 32 BJ buildings, lots of comments about smaller buildings, and how do you with no live in staff? Lots oh. of comments, lots of comments. Sorry, lots of comments about what's two hours difference going to make the rats feed at night. Everything was opposed. I didn't see one comment that supported it. Yeah. Where are you guys getting this? Uh, Anita put it the link earlier oh. at 758, I think, on the chat. Oh, okay. And if you the link I just <clears throat> the link I just pasted in the chat. Right. If you read through that, you'll see a link that goes to where you can post public comments. Oh I'll get on there and it's say. Long. Use the to help with rat abatement. Yeah, and I'll be posting. I'm. I, I don't know if Swab officially is going to, but I'm going to be posting something related to rats. Yeah, I'm not seeing a link to comments. So uh, let me put that one. Right. Here, I think that's Ryan. That was it for new business. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I can send out this info as well. Um, and you know, I I have a comment. I just thought about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, in regards to um, quorum, um, how can this you know be addressed? Um, we we just can't keep having meetings with no quorum in place. Um, we know we have members, some members that never attended. Um one of our meetings, uh, I, I want to believe there has, you know, we have to be able to function and be able to pass, uh, be able to vote on issues and, and pass it. We know next year we're moving into um, a new legislative year for Albany, as well as um, uh, the city council. Uh, so, then we we need to look into how this can be addressed, at least to deal with the uh, members who have never um, attended, uh, because there are, uh, you know, do we need to add um, new orgs? Um, but we need to get to the point where we can have quorum. Yeah, yeah, I will say, um, you know, with this change for for the month of November to avoid Thanksgiving, we did have a larger than normal uh, amount of people reach out saying that they were not able to make tonight. Um, so, you know, not counting last month when we had our normal meeting and still didn't have quorum this time. I was yeah. already a little bit afraid because some of our regular attendees weren't able to make it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that for, um, for folks who've never attended, um, folks who are not in good standing don't count towards the number we need, but right. I do think that, you know, mm -hmm. adding folks who are, um, yes, good, good question about December, um, yeah. adding folks is, mm -hmm. is, is good. And, and that's something that we're, we're working on. Trika mentioned, okay looking at the the bylaws to figure out what what we want to do for um 
you know, removing members who who aren't active and and adding new folks, okay. um, both individuals as well as um, representatives. Um, yeah. I, uh, okay, but you know, it would be through the borough president. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I saw um, Anita raised and lowered. If you if you want to, you can come off mute. Um, otherwise, I see Janet has her hand. Great, Janet, if you want to, or not, I'm very. I'm just saying it would be better to have 20 active members than to have 40 members and have half the people, uh, you know, not participating. And I do think that there are people, people we work with who, um, you know, might be willing to join, who really, you know, are, are passionate about these issues and, uh, you know, get some new blood in. Yeah. yeah. It's time. It's our second year, right? And, <clears throat> And we're obviously, you know, we're obviously moving and making videos, you know, you know, taking our place with the other swabs, but we have to have a group of people who want to be here and participate. Yeah. I'll just pass comment that um, we do, we do have um, the issue of some, some members who, who never attend, which is with bylaws uh, committee for consideration about uh, revocation of membership, if I understand correctly. Um, but I'll make a comment that um, the the bigger issue that we experience is members who do typically attend regularly, but are um, frequently also not in attendance. Um, mm -hmm. So if you um, you or or someone you are close with uh, at, at Q Swab um, mm -hmm. is someone who knows that maybe you're only making two or three out of every six meetings. You can very well still be in good standing um, mm -hmm. with our current bylaws, which are again up for consideration. Um, and that's um, that's the main reason that we occasionally do not reach quorum. So mm -hmm. uh, that's about. Um, that circumstance applies to about 14 of our 43 total members. Okay. So yeah. we're back to the bylaws, the bylaws needing to be. Because uh, it's it, it's currently, the way it's currently written is it's missed consecutive, not total, right? Is that correct? Um, it is three unexcused absences within the previous six month period. Okay. I'll, I'll put the recommendation in writing for the bylaws committee. Great, that'd be perfect. Okay. Um, perfect. So we are at 8.20. Um, if there's a motion to adjourn, we can adjourn or continue. On that happy <laughs> note, I make a motion <laughs> to adjourn. Great. Is that a second? I'll second. Great, great. All in favor. Bye. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Nice Thank to see you. you all. Thanks. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah. Enjoy the holidays. Oh, God.